Hi, I'm Pete Ellahorst, Director of Field Support here at Crown Plastics Company, and welcome to this edition of Make It Stick, the video series where we take very difficult applications out on the field and show how we can make our DuraServe products stick for you. One of the applications we're going to be talking about today are package distribution chutes and package delivery chutes. What we have here is what is typical in a package delivery situation. Now, as you can see, these chutes are typically steel. They usually have a radius in there. But again, with them being steel, the coefficient of friction of steel is not that good. So what ends up happening is a lot of companies will spray lubricants into these chutes. This is a costly, repetitive process, and it is not a true solution to the problem because you have to keep reapplying and reapplying and reapplying. One of the things that we have found is that our DuraSurf STS, or our silicone treated surface material, will actually provide a more permanent solution to this problem. What we would like to do now is actually show you a number of different packages coming down the chute and some of the problems that exist in a, in a number of dis different scenarios within package distribution and sortation. We'll then install the DuraSurf STS and we'll show you how we're going to install that and how we're going to shingle the product down and then we'll actually show the results and run these same packages down with the STS and you'll see a definite improvement in the package flow. Now when you're dealing with package sortation and package distribution, there are all sorts of dynamics that you have to take into consideration. Not only the weight and the size of the package, but also things like the environment. You can take a small five pound box, which may or may not go down based on how much shoot lube you have in at the time. You may even have a situation where you're distributing or handling small light envelopes or padded envelopes. These are a real challenge in the package distribution market because there's just not enough weight to give the package any velocity. You're also going into situations where either the humidity may be high or maybe it's raining outside. Packages are coming in wet. And for that reason, a lot of packages do not come down the chutes. We've heard of situations where some package distribution facilities will have to bring in 14 additional people and give them poles just to push product down the chutes because the packages just will not flow on their own. Now what we're going to do in order to solve the problems that you just saw is we're going to line this chute with our DuraSurf STS, which is a silicone enhanced UHMW material with an adhesive backing. Now in order to do this, there are a few things that we are going to need. The first thing we're going to do is prep the surface of the chute. Obviously, in a lot of cases, there's been a lot of chute lubricant uh, that has been in these chutes. Uh, sometimes people are spraying pledge or who knows what in there. We've got to get that cleaned out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some acetone or some MEK to really break down a lot of the uh, heavy buildup that's in the chute. We're going to follow that up with a wipe down of isopropyl alcohol. At that point in time, we're going to start installing our panels of our DuraSurf STS. Once the panels, which we've already had these cut to size, once these are in place, we'll make sure that we use mechanical pressure. There are many cases what we recommend is a roller, like you see here. And we're going to use that to apply mechanical pressure to the part once it's in place. And you'll see really that the installation is very quick, it's very simple. And the beauty of this system is it can be very easily retrofitted into almost any system that's out there in the field today. Okay, now the first step, as I mentioned, would be to wipe down the chute with the acetone. And again, what you want to make sure is make sure you, you use plenty of acetone on the rag. Don't be, don't be shy about it. Make sure you're really getting a good clean surface and make sure you really get into these crevices here or these joints because there's going to be a lot of contamination that's going to reside there. Now what you'll do is you'll pull your rag up and you'll see you'll have a fair amount of contamination on there. Be sure to turn or change your rag frequently to prevent from recontaminating the surface that you're working on. Okay, now that we've completed the initial wipe down with the acetone, we're doing a secondary wipe down with isopropyl alcohol. And basically what the point of this is, is some of these solvents that we use to take off the heavy residue, uh, some of that will leave a little bit of 
of residue left on the on the shoot. So we want to make sure that we go over with the alcohol. As you can see, we're getting a little bit of, of residue on there that we're still cleaning up, so getting a little contamination up. So again, frequently turn your rag or frequently change your rag, but this is why this this step is very important. Also, the alcohol evaporates cleanly and the alcohol will not leave any residue in there, which will uh, be important when we go to bond our material.